Well, hello, students, and welcome to another episode here on Jay's Learning School. On today's lesson, I am going to teach you about phrasal verbs that you can use while you're at home. So let's get ready to have some fun. Let's get ready to learn about phrasal verbs for usage at home. And of course, this is going to be in English. Now, make sure you're paying attention because as I say on each lesson, I'm going to have three or four quiz questions throughout today's lesson. And so if you're paying attention, not only should you be learning, but you should also be able to answer these questions. I'm also going to go over a recent comment that one of the subscribers left on one of the videos. And so stick around for that. Let's get into today's lesson. So a phrasal verb is a group of words that function as a verb and is made up of a verb plus a preposition, an adverb or or both. So if that does not make sense, when you see the examples that we'll use today, you're basically going to see that these are phrases that are considered action words. These are phrases that basically give you commands or instructions, and they are somewhat descriptive. So that will help you to better understand what a phrasal verb is. So let's look at some examples today. And as always, I'm going to give you some example sentences. Looking for some water that I could drink my Throat was getting a little dry, but we'll have to endure it and make it through today's lesson. All right. All right. Our first example, throw away, throw away. So you might say, I need to throw away the trash in the bathroom, or you might give your child chores. And one of the chores is to throw away the trash in the kitchen. And of course, when you throw it away, uh, you would take it to a trash can. And here in the United States, we have services where people come around to your home and pick up your trash and take it to the landfill. And of course, that is a fee that you have to pay the county or you have to pay a privately owned business to throw away your trash. Or. You can take the trash yourself to a recycle center or what is called here a convenience center and you throw away your trash in a dumpster and then the county comes and takes the trash from the dumpster to the landfill. OK, so throw away. If there's trash on the floor, you may say pick that up and throw that away. That's actually two phrasal verbs. Talk about that one later, but throw away. Pick up. So pick that up and throw it away. Of course, to pick up is to pick something up off the floor, pick something up off the ground, pick something up off the table, uh, pick it up wherever it may be lying around. So you would take your hand and pick it up. You can pick up an object, pick up that pencil, pick up the glass before someone steps on it, pick up that banana peel, pick up your toys. So these are examples of how you could use the phrase pick up. If I look around my room, there are cords on the floor. And if I don't want to trip, I need to pick up the cords and make them organized or get them out the way. That would be another verb, phrasal verb. So pick up, hang up, hang up your clothes. Don't just leave them lying on the floor, hang them up. Where can I hang up my jacket? Where can I hang up my raincoat? Hang up. Usually to hang up, I could take off this a jersey and I could hang it up on a coat hanger or I could hang it up on a coat stand, which is independent of a closet. 
I would hang it up. Some people have a case to put their glasses in and some people hang them up on different things to keep them from getting scratched or damaged. Okay, I can hang up a tie. I can take my tie off when I have one on and put it on a tie hanger. Okay, hang up. Now, I wouldn't hang up shoes. I would put them away. Okay, so hang up, hang up. Now, if you're wondering, I have on an arsenal. If you, let's see if you can see that. A soccer team. Uh, let me go this way. There you go. Now you can see it. Uh, arsenal. And not necessarily a fan. <laughs> but it just so happens that this jersey was on sale. And so I purchased it. And when I'm not wearing it, I hang it up in my closet. So hang up, put away. All right. I think I just said, put away your shoes. Okay. You don't hang up your shoes. You, you put them away. Uh, what else can you put away in the winter time? I put away the blankets or shall I say in the summertime, I put away the blankets. Okay. Because the blankets is what I use to keep warm and I wouldn't need them in the summertime. So put away. OK, put the games away and read a book, put away, store it away, get it out of here. <laughs> OK, so you would put something away in its proper place. That's what my grandmother used to tell me. Always put away things in its proper place. Don't just leave things around. And when you need them, you know exactly where they are. So put things away. You know what? Speaking of putting things away, me and my wife get to arguing sometimes because I will put things away where I want them to be and she may come and move them. <laughs> and then when I need it, it's not where I put it away. And so we'll get to arguing and, and she'll say, stop blaming me. And sometimes I didn't put it away. I put it somewhere else and I have to apologize. <laughs> OK, so put away. Also, when you're in the home, you could say clean up, clean up your mess. You made it. OK, clean up the bathroom. Let's clean up this closet. Let's take a few hours and clean up the dog hair. Clean up. OK, tidy up. OK, make things more arranged or neat. Clean up. We need to clean up this shower. OK, we need to clean up in the bathroom. So clean up is a phrasal verb that you would use around the house. Tidy up. It seems like I'm getting ahead of myself in some of the phrasal verbs. I'm, I'm saying them not knowing that they're next. Tidy up. It's synonymous or the same or similar as clean up. It's just another way of saying get organized or to pick up or clean up. Let's tidy up this room. Hey, Clean up under your bed. I want you to tidy up in here. OK, tidy up. Synonymous again with clean up. Mop up. Now you can mop with a wet mop or you can mop with a a dry mop. When I want to clean the kitchen floor, at least in the type of floor that I have here at the home, we use a wet mop, water and soap. We sweep the floor and then we mop up the trash or the dirt on the kitchen floor. But in my living room, we don't use a wet mop. We use what is called a, a dry mop. And we take a dry mop and we mop up the dust that's in the room. So sometimes if we're working, my wife and I, if we're busy, we don't have time sometimes to mop up the dust off the floor. And so we'll get dust balls on the floor in a couple of the rooms. And so 
she'll ask me, can you mop up the floor today? Now, I usually let her mop up the dust because dust sometimes makes me sneeze or gets gets my eyes watery. And so what I'll do is I'll let her do the dust mopping and I do the wet mopping. So I don't have a problem mopping the kitchen or mopping the bathroom. OK, mop up the floor or mop up the dirt that's on the floor. Mop up. All right, here's our first quiz question for today's lesson. What phrasal verb can you use to clean the bathroom? Actually, I gave two. What phrasal verb can you use to clean or can you use or say to clean the bathroom? Now, if you can get one of them right, that's great. But if you can get both of them right, that's excellent. Make sure you would leave your answer or answers down in the comments section and write it in a sentence. What phrasal verb can you use to clean the bathroom? Now, here's a quick tip. One of the answers is in the question. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Turn on. Turn on the light. OK. Turn on the dishwasher. OK, the dishwasher is a machine in most kitchens in the United States that will automatically clean the dishes, the cups, the silverware. Depending on how dirty a pot or pan is, it will clean it once you turn it on. You have to put soap in it and the water will come in automatically and it will heat it and it will dry it once you turn it on. You can turn on the television. You can turn on the wash machine, okay? The wash machine washes your clothes. You can turn on the air condition. You can turn on uh, the game system, the PlayStation, the Xbox. You can turn it on. OK, or you could say power it on, but it's more proper, proper, proper to say turn on. Turn off. OK, so you would turn it off or sometimes we say cut it off. <laughs> so turn off, turn off the light. OK, it's too bright in here. OK, turn off the music. It's too loud. Turn it off. It's time to go to bed turn off the television. Okay. Turn off that phone <laughs> or get off that phone or I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi. That's a good one. All right. Put on, put on some clothes, put on your shoes. Okay. Put on a hat. It's cold outside. Put on your rain boots. It's raining outside. So put on, dress yourself, put on. Okay. Or you could say, look, put the butter on the potato, put on. Can I put on pepper or how would you say that? No, you wouldn't say that, but to put on, you could, you could put, put the placemats on the table. That's a good one. Okay. So put on. Take down is another phrasal verb that you would use around the house. Take down, take down the poster. Take down the picture. OK, I need you to take that down. It's time to take down the Christmas decorations. If you have a wreath on the door for Christmas around January, we take it down. People that celebrate Halloween, they may have Halloween decorations outside, but then November 1st, November 2nd, they take down the decorations. So to take down is another way to just say to remove something. OK, take it down. Stock up is a phrasal verb that you would use around the house and usually it pertains to having more food or groceries in the house. 
having some basic necessities in the house. So when we're running out of toilet paper, it's time to stock up on toilet paper. Okay. It's time to stock up on soup in the winter, particularly, what is it called? Chicken noodle soup. Okay. Usually chicken noodle soup is a great remedy when you are battling a cold. Okay. Or you feel like the flu is coming on. You want to stock up on chicken noodle soup. Uh, Some people like bottled water. And so you stock up on bottled water. So depending on what the commodity is or what the non-perishable food is, when you're running low in volume, then you would stock up. Okay, I need to stock up on my vitamins. I'm running out of vitamins. We got to go to the vitamin store and stock up to get some vitamins or to get some herbs. Okay. Wow. It seems like I'm running low on echinacea. It's time to stock up. Good. You're getting it. Put it. That should be back. Wow. A typo. Put. No, 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 no. That's correct. Put it by. Put it by. Put that pen by the television. Okay. Put the lawnmower by the garage. Okay. Put my shoes by the front door. Put it by. Okay. Uh, It's it's a safety hazard. Put those scissors by the desk. Okay. Don't leave them laying around. Put it by the desk. So put it by. Has to do with location, where you put something. All right. Here's our second quiz for. Today's lesson. If it is dark in the bedroom, what phrasal verb can you use to have light on in the room? If it is dark in the bedroom, what phrasal verb can you use to have light on in the room? Leave your answer down in the comment section. Okay, sweep up, sweep up that trash. Sweep up the dust. Sweep up that cat hair. Okay. Sweep up. Sweep up the paper that's on the floor. Okay. So that's another another phrase that you could use when it comes to keeping something clean. We talked about keeping clean, tidy up. Then you could use sweep up. We also talked about mop up. So Sweep up is when you use a broom. Okay. And of course, brooms come in different shapes and sizes. But when there is debris on the floor, you would use a sweep to sweep it up. Get out. (laughs) You may have to tell your pet to get out the room. Okay. Get out the room and go to your cage. Okay, so if your pet's name is Fido, get out, Fido. Okay, you may have to tell a family member, I'm trying to get dressed. Will you please get out? Or I'm on the phone. You're talking too loud. Can you please leave or get out? (laughs) Get out is usually a more direct and firm way to tell someone to leave a room. Okay, so get out of here is something some people may say, and then slam the door. (laughs) Get out. I'm playing a video game. Or can you get out? I'm trying to read. Can you get out? I'm trying to meditate or pray. Get out. Get out of the room. Get out of the car. Okay. Please get out. You smell. So there are many different ways that you can use get out. Call back is a phrasal verb that you can use at home. I need to call my mother back. I missed my grandmother's phone call. I must call her back. Okay. The job called. I need to call them back. Okay. My teacher called. Let's call them back. So call back is usually a term that you use when you miss a phone call, uh, 
or such. So you would use your cell phone or home phone to to call a person back. OK, quiet down. That's a nice way of saying be quiet or shut up. <laughs> Can you please quiet down? I can't hear the television. Or sometimes we say, can you quiet down? I can't hear my own self think. Can't hear myself think. And usually when we say that, there's a lot going on in our mind and we can't concentrate. And so we say, would you please quiet down? Okay. Can you quiet down? I think I hear someone in the house. Okay. Quiet down. I'm trying to listen what she is saying okay can you quiet down the baby i'm trying to sleep quiet down i use that pretty often it seems like the older i get <laughs> the more sensitive my ears become quiet down when i was younger i used to like music loud the tv loud but now it's more or less please quiet that down turn the tv down uh i do have a little stereo that when I watch movies, I do like that to be a little loud. I like the sound effects. But for the most part, for me, it's like quiet down. <laughs> All right. Here's our next pop quiz question. If you need to command your dog or pet to leave the room and go to the kitchen, what phrasal verb can you use? If you need to command your pet, and of course, not a fish <laughs> or a hamster, to leave the room and go to the kitchen, what phrasal verb can you use? Leave that down in the description. So I think that's three or four questions. And that's going to do it for today's lesson. Very short and to the point. I am so thankful that you made it until the end. I hope you get all of the quiz questions correctly. OK, now, if there is a topic that you would like to uh, learn, leave it down in the comments section and let me know. Speaking of comments, let's look at a recent comment from one of my faithful, faithful, I mean, very faithful um, subscribers. Here's the recent comment from Ahmad. He says, it is Hail Mary. That is, this is from the uh, American football lesson that I did. What is it? When a quarterback throws the ball in hopes that the receiver will catch it at the last minute. And the answer was Hail Mary. And he said it Hail Mary. And I said, yes, Ahmad, you are correct. Here's a tip. In your answer, you should say it is Hail Mary or it's Hail Mary. Keep up the great job, Ahmad. So just a little tip because it was a possessive it's. Hail Mary or it is Hail Mary. So keep those comments coming. Any suggestions? Let me know. Hey, give me a like. <laughs> Can we get five likes for today's video? If you know someone that's trying to understand English better, feel free to share today's lesson with them. Uh, there's a share button below. Share the video on uh, your text. You text someone on WhatsApp, on Facebook. Uh, feel free to, to share today's lesson because it's all about helping other people to understand and speak better English. I hope you join me on my next live stream. I'm streaming as of this point on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays at 9 15 a.m also don't forget i do have a podcast available that you can watch or use on your phone and it's an audio version of different english lessons that you can listen to throughout the week i release about three maybe four episodes sometime uh, and it seems that they're being very helpful to a number of you so thank you for for listening all right. Until next time, I hope you join me on my next live stream. Be sure to give me a like. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful weekend.